Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 37 of Thorncraft 5. We're here on the flux capacitor that I made at the end of the last episode, and this thing still is not working, unfortunately. Yes, I've done a little bit more, some work off camera, uh, gathering some more of these tainted shards. I've got most of them back at the base, but I just brought this one over here to uh, demonstrate what's going on. So let's go ahead and toss that in there and get the old scan stanometer out there we go so let's just have a look at the uh, area first right that's what we've got right now that's the the graph we've got a lot of taint in the air but unfortunately it's not really going up any higher than this i haven't been able to find out why uh, the totem appears to actually be working and it's pulling taint in but it seems to be decreasing every once in a while and i'm not actually sure why whether or not it's diffusing into the surrounding chunks again or what but yeah it, it just doesn't seem to be working and it's not going into these uh, tainted crystals that are on the ground or anything like that uh, my guess is that uh, from what i understand anyway basically each chunk in the game has sort of a soft cap on the amount of vs that it can have inside of itself and i think you guys were talking about this sort of in the comments of the last video as well uh, so I've been trying to decrease the amount of other uh, types of uh, Vs that I have in the chunk, but I've still got a lot of Aqua and Paraditeo in the chunk. Uh, I was hoping to be able to get those low enough to be able to increase this up and for it to go up pretty high. That's actually pretty high at the moment, but yeah, it's just going to drop back down again. <sighs> so yeah, the whole reason that this I built this, by the way, was so that it was an easy way, a quick and easy way to obtain... Uh, these tainted crystals like if i could get two tainted crystals per one spent inside of our little capacitor totem thingy then you know the system would be self-sufficient but the system hasn't even been like zero percent efficiency i haven't gotten a single tainted shard back for all of the ones that i've spent and i've probably tossed about 10 or so of these shards in here now I haven't got any back so this whole idea <laughs> it's a cool idea and it's a cool build it's a cool name but it's a total dud of an idea, so uh, we're probably going to abandon it. Uh, the best way to get tainted shards that I've found is, yeah, just like back in that old episode with, uh, I can't even remember how old it is now, it was called Taint Shards or something like that, where I basically went into the nether and I tossed a bunch of useless junk in a crucible and, and it generates a whole heap of flux and then that goes into your uh, taint, not, not, they don't even have to be tainted crystals, they can be normal crystals that turn tainted and then you can just pick those up. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and reclaim materials. How do I get this crystal out of there? You just right click and okay So as long as you've got any crystal type that'll work and this should be done now. Yeah Just went ahead and slipped the nard away So now that it's daytime and this is something new that's in the base now I've got a little pig farm right here because I want to start gathering some pig meat Why exactly do we need pig meat? Well, we will reveal that another time. There's a pretty cool little Thorncraft item you can make that's not mentioned in the Thormonomicon, and I actually had to be told by you guys back in the TC4 series. Anyway, something else that I've been doing here off camera is if we head up to my infusion altar, I've got some skeletons hanging out in this pool over here that we will quickly dispatch of. Yes, I've been working here with uh, the redstone related item that Thorncraft adds, the redstone relay i believe it's called it's been a while since we read up on this thing so just to recap let's go ahead and into the thormonomicon i believe it's under the artifice tab there it is up here so redstone relay magical redstone interaction you've always been curious about the seemingly negative reaction between mystical devices and redstone signals you've studied the matter and while it's a well-known phenomenon that redstone inhibits magic you've discovered that in specific circumstances the opposite can be true as well. One practical application of this is the redstone relay. By sending a redstone signal through a magical substance like these crystals, you can inhibit it as much or as little as you want. So the recipe for it is right here. Redstone torch, brass gear, order shard, and three slabs, interestingly. It doesn't take stone like the normal uh, vanilla recipes and a, like a ridiculously low amount of ease there as well. Relays are placed much like redstone repeaters with their output side marked by a redstone torch. And unlike repeaters, relays have two toggles. The rearmost one determines the minimum input signal required to overwhelm this inhibiting effect and allow the relay to activate. The front toggle next to the redstone torch determines how strong the redstone signal is that the relay will output once it's active. So uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate that in practice here. You've got the redstone relay here. 
And you can see we've got these two kind of valve thingies from the sentia tubes. I'm just going to call them like gears, I suppose. So, And when you mouse over them, you've got this in one and out 15. And you can actually see these, by the way, without your goggles of revealing on. So it's noob friendly. Pretty awesome. So how exactly does it work? Let's go ahead and buff this all the way up to... Now 15 just to demonstrate. So I've got this redstone signal coming in right here. This is signal strength 15 here. That's 14. And because the in is re the in requirement to trigger the thing is 15 and this is 14 coming in, it's not going to work. Uh, so if it's anything less than that, uh, no, if it's any if it's this signal or less, uh, this thing is going to trigger, right? And then this one right here determines the actual strength of the signal coming out. So right now it's 15. And if I go ahead and adjust this, it basically goes all the way down to the lowest that it can 1. It can't go down to 0, interestingly. Uh, it has to be, it goes from 1 to 15 and not 0. So you can go ahead and uh, right click this to get the strength that you need. I'm not quite sure exactly what kind of redstone device that I can think of that would uh, use something like this. It's kind of like a slightly more convenient comparator I guess you can use a comparator in a slightly similar way with the compare mode but this is yeah like I said just a little bit more convenient in certain regards and just something else that I wanted to show you guys is that you can see we've got these two knobs on the side of the relay right here and now with the redstone repeaters I've got a little concept demonstration up here that I need to set up where are we go ahead and throw that there do I have a spare lever I've got a spare lever Put that back. There we go. So we've got this system right here. You can go ahead and turn on this repeater. And then if you've got a repeater pointing at a repeater and you activate it, it'll get this little bedrock bar. But also it'll basically stop the, uh, the output toggling regardless of what the input is. So I can go ahead and do that. And that works just fine. Or I can go ahead and do this now like this. And it's not going to turn on. So anyway, I thought because it's got these thingies on it, I thought, great, it actually works, just like the redstone repeaters do. Uh, but it turns out, no, it doesn't. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Turn that on. Uh, no bedrock bar or anything, and that just works regardless. Alright, so anyway, that's the redstone relay in a nutshell. I'm not quite sure how to uh, use this thing. We're definitely going to have to build some kind of device that uses it, but yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of like a more sophisticated repeater, but a slightly less sophisticated comparator. It's kind of a hybrid of the two in a way. <laughs> Alright, anyway, we're going to finish this episode off with just a couple of miscellaneous researches here. We've got some things that we could research just to fill in a bit of time, and I think that's a, now's a good time to do that. So the first thing that we're going to get here is the arcane lamp, something that I've been sorely missing from TC4. Pretty nice item, a large source of light indeed. You need 3 XP levels to go ahead and pick that up, so let's go ahead and do just that. And that appears to have unlocked two new things right here, the Lamp of Growth and the Lamp of Fertility. I didn't really use this one very much in TC4, uh, but yeah, that one looked pretty interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and read about our new lighting source. This mystical lamp can be attached to walls, floors, or ceilings, and will provide strong and steady light. Additional sources of light may also appear up to 16 blocks away wherever light levels fall below accepted safe levels. In other words, levels that, uh, you know, hostile mobs can spawn in. Remember, you can prevent zombie outbreaks using Azenor industry products. <laughs> These secondary sources of light will disappear soon after the lamp has been removed. Yeah, so in, in layman's terms, uh, just a single arcane lamp is actually really good at lighting up a huge area, which is pretty awesome. It's like those old, what was that thing called from factorization? The wrath lamp. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but a little bit more different. <laughs> the secondary sources of light, well, I already said that. The lamp can be turned off by applying a redstone signal. I did not know that. Maybe that's a new feature in TC5. So the recipe for it is a daylight sensor, a block of amber, two iron, and a bit of need tool. That's actually pretty cheap. What's the recipe for a daylight sensor? I've actually forgotten. Do I have this stuff on hand? I think it was... Let's see if I can make one really quick. It took some redstone uh, quartz. Where was the quartz? I've got my dioptra over there now. You might have just noticed that. Yeah, there's the dioptra and all her glory. I think it's actually wooden slabs, if I remember. Do I have any slabs in there? I don't think so. Got a couple of slabs here. Let's test this out. Uh, it was like that. Redstone quartz on top. Is this the recipe? Did I get it right? Or was it, maybe it's the redstone on top. Uh-oh. 
Now, I was close. I was close with the daylight sensor. You just needed to replace that redstone with glass, and there we go. There's the daylight sensor. I haven't actually made one of these before in this world, so let's just quickly scan stan it. Nothing new. Uh, would have definitely been something interesting to have new. Alright, so that was that part of the recipe. Now we need some Nitor. Let's store my Nitor in here now. I'm also going to need, what was it, two blocks of iron, like so. Uh, an amber, that's right, we need amber, so we'll get some amber there too. Amber doodle doo. I got a whole batch of amber now, 20 blocks, and they take nine per to make those, by the way, so there's a lot of amber right there. Alright, so that in there, daylight sensor on top, and the two iron ingots, and a little bit of ease in there, let's just go ahead and throw the old brass blaster in. There you go. That's two new things to scan today. Let's just double check it. Throw it on the floor and scan, scan it. Nope, that is all we got for that. So, the arcane lamp. Pretty awesome item, as I said. And where am I actually going to stick this to demonstrate? It is almost night time. I guess what I'll do is just kind of put it here. Replace our red night nitor, nitor with the arcane lamp texture. Very awesome looking, and that's going to light up a whole area above this and probably below this a bit there as well. Alright, let's go ahead and... Uh, where am I going to put this knee toy? Just back in here, I guess. We'll find some other use for this, I'm sure. Alright, well that's that thing researched. Let's go ahead and focus on something else now. I'm thinking of actually skipping over to another tab. Where was it exactly? There was something that I wanted to get. Here we go, the Everfall Urn. Yeah, I saw this as well and thought... That's, a problem. That's another one of these miscellaneous ones. We need scribing tools and paper for that. So let's get those guys out. Just get all the paper. All of the paper! Get that research node, nice bright blue. Uh, aqua, probably. What a guess. <laughs> aqua Terra Fabrico. This appears to be a nice little small one. Uh, let's see if we can get started with this. I'm just trying to think if there's something that we can do here. I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, Pedamotatio is probably the best thing. That way we can go Pedaditio like so, then put some aqua in, get some more tools that connects across there, and there's nothing that'll connect those two together, but we can use an intermediate, and I'm thinking of Ayr to be honest, so there's some Ayr right there, get some Wheatreus down, and finally some Marcos, so a pretty simple one, didn't have to think too hard, but it is kind of small. And it's a pretty basic item as well. So the Everfall Urn, uh, to be fair, we should have actually gotten this thing ages ago. <laughs> a source of infinite water. A small fountain of pure water always flows from the top of this urn, making it a perfect water source to fill your buckets, bottles, or other liquid containers. It'll also automatically replenish any liquid containers within two blocks of it, if they can accept water from the top. This is perfect for automatically refilling crucibles, but it has other uses as well, so maybe it could refill cauldrons and probably some of those modded items as well. Every bucket full of water created costs one aquavis, which is drawn from the aura. I did not know that. Okay, it does take a little bit of vis to work, which I guess is fairly fair, so one bucket equals one aqua. That's, that's still pretty small for the amount of times that you're going to use it. It is required to make it with infusion. Okay, you need two water buckets. Hopefully it preserves the buckets. You need a bit of silicium and do some a water shard. Ultimately, that's actually pretty cheap. I'm just going to go ahead and gather the materials to make this real quick, and we'll be right back. Okay, we have the infusion ingredients on the altar. Let's go ahead and get that infusion started. I don't have as much aqua here as I should because I accidentally uh, left this guy here while I was making some more of those crystal things for making a, basically, when I was talking at the start of the episode about uh, taint the tainted shots, I basically made a new spot in the nether. I forgot to say that I'll show you guys a screenshot of my new quote-unquote lab in, in the nether for making taint shards. It's basically just a couple hundred blocks away from this, the uh, the portal. Anyway, here's our new guy here, the Everfull Urn. I believe this was in TC2, I can't quite remember. And somebody made an add-on for TC4 or something. Anyway, it's back in vanilla Thomcraft. Awesome stuff. Unfortunately, nothing new there from the Everfull Urn. So, uh, this thing does have a couple of uses, apparently. I've got this infinite spring that's been sitting here for the entire game, and if I wanted, I could get rid of that thing now, because this does pretty much the same thing, if I'm not mistaken. I'll just go ahead and empty my bucket. 
And yeah, that's just going to be a full thing, but that does cost a little bit of iron. I mean, you know, I could have like quadruple the space and not cost any of these. But the cool thing about these is that they'll also fill the crucibles and probably cauldrons as well. I'm actually just going to go ahead and shell out on seven, seven iron here just to test this out, just because just because I have a whole heap of iron, I guess. I've spent a lot in this world already. Let's see if it'll fill it up. Uh, maybe we've got to give it a little bit of time there. Maybe it doesn't recognize that cauldrons actually can take on water. Go ahead and pick that up. Now you can't take water back out of cauldrons. Interesting. Try that again. Have I actually scanned a cauldron on the subject? 21 iron. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. That is still a loss though. Scan stanometer. Alright, no, nothing new in there. Maybe it won't work with it, but uh, the thing about these Everfull Urns, we're probably not going to be using them too much because the thing about them, they do fill the Crucibles up, but we've kind of already moved past <laughs> using Crucibles. We're now moving on to Formatoriums for creating all of our needs in our nether base, so unfortunately Mr. Everfull Urn may just be sitting in the inventory here as a long lost relic, so yeah, be sure to get this thing earlier on in your exploits. And it actually has Weety Ulm inside it. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, I guess that's because of the Silly's Mundus. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just do one more thing here to finish off the episode. Uh, what are we going to do? What are you? Thormium Essentia Smeltery. Harvesting Essentia. That's the same as this guy. Is there like a bit of smeltery? There's a bit of smeltery, apparently. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to devote an entire episode to that. I think there's something here in the Artifice tab. The Arcane Ear. Yeah, that's probably what we should get. The Arcane Ear, another of, of Thormcraft's redstone devices. That's probably going to be Sensus in this one. Yeah, that's Sensus right there. And we've also got Makina there as well. Well, we're probably going to have to go Instrumentum, which was... I've forgotten what that was, actually. I get the instrumentum going. There we go. So now that'll look, connect across there. Uh, maybe I need to go. I'll go spiritus there. Obviously, I. It's like we literally use it in almost every single infusion. This aspect. <laughs> uh, get some spiritus down. Maybe I just want to be a little bit more efficient with my placement. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. So I think I'm going to do something like uh, my talum right here. Uh, the recipe for my talum was ordo and terra. So I'll put my Talum right there, then I can put Terra down. I'll put Terra up here like this, that way I can put Life down there. Get Life, that's good, and then I'll be able to put Weetreus there uh, to connect the Aya and the Terra. So another fairly simple one, but yeah, it was a small thing. Cool beans. Shh, do you hear something? was the flavor text on the arcane ear. This actually looks to have been gotten a retexture as well. Most of the redstone stuff retextured in TC5. The arcane ear is a device that's capable of detecting the sound emitted from nearby note blocks. If it hears a note it recognizes, it will emit a short redstone pulse. The arcane ear needs to be tuned in a manner identical to note blocks. The tone and note it listens for depends on the material it's placed against and the right clickability. Arcane ears can be placed against any surface. In other words, they float, I suppose. Yeah, so that's the recipe for them right here. That has been changed as well. I remember that taking a ton of gold at TC4. It's good to see that that's been changed to brass. Now it takes a bunch of iron, so... <laughs> no. Okay, cool. So the arcane ear, yeah, cool retexture job there. They used to have these big four speakers coming out of each side, I think. So that looks to only just be the one kind of sticking out the, t the bottom. Rawr. Okay, and the zombie brain there as well. We've got tons of zombie brains, so that's not an issue. Slabs, again, not an issue because we've got tons of wood. I'll go ahead and show you guys my wood supply. Uh, the thing that I was putting down that I say was uh, silverwood logs, by the way, because when you're making as many pure nodes as I have up there, uh, you do end up with a substantial amount of silverwood logs, and I've already gone through this one chest that was full of silverwood logs and a bit of gunpowder there as well. But yeah, I've got plenty of logs to go through if I need. And by the way, as well, I also wanted to say about an entire inventory load of those silverwood logs tends to generate about uh, four or five of these tainted shards whenever you take them over to the uh, the taint shard foundry, the taint shard lab thing that I have set up in the nether. 
anyway yeah that's going to be it for this episode uh i think this is a little bit long i probably did a bit too much in this episode it's too long now but whatever <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the episode thank you very much for watching Kia kaha, and i'll see you in the next one